third generation, 85-year-old, family-owned company. We're going to step inside and talk Hydromat today, and it's already snowing, so I'm going to get inside right away and do an intro in there. I'll see you guys inside. I'm freezing. Welcome to Schmidt Tool and Engineering. Today we're here to talk Hydromat and what it can do for you. Now, what it's done here on this specific machine we're standing in front of right now is it took a two minute and 45 second program, cut it to 17 seconds where the parts pop off, eight different machines were running it before with eight employees on two shifts, so 16 employees. And now it's exactly what you, do you even see a person running the machine right now? That's how good Hydromat can be for you as well on those high production runs. Eric, you're joining me today. I'm so excited to talk with you about this. Hydromat, it's really helped you increase productivity, hasn't it? Yeah, Tony, it really has. It's, it's something that's taken us to the next level. Um, when Matthias Walter came to us first to, to sell us a Hydromat, he talked specifically about companies that had the right DNA. We had already been running quite a few different um, so we say home, homegrown rotary transfer machines. And he noticed that right away and he said, you guys have the DNA to be successful running a Hydromat. Not every company can be successful running a Hydromat. You have to have the experience. You have to have good engineers. You have to have a, an, an understanding of complex machinery for sure. Well, knowing that you come from 85 years and a third generation family owned company, I can only imagine there's been the ups and downs of learning what a good engineer and a bad engineer might look like and some of the machinery and concepts that go into it. But once you've really figured out, once you fine tune, the Hydromat really it increases everything that you were previously capable of doing, doesn't it? It does. Your, your, your tooling life goes up your, your, and your cycle time goes down. So it's like the two winners, if you could say, is huge. And I, I don't think there's another machine out there that, that can cut cycle time like a Hydromat. It, it's just simply the fastest machines out there. I like that you say that because you need it here. You guys are creative. You're making your own parts. You do contracted stuff as well, but your, 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 your team is creative. You've been doing this a long time. The parts being made right here, they are created by you guys. And in fact, behind us over here, or in front of you, behind me, is the first Hydromat. This is the second. You actually have a third one coming based on your continued creativity. We do, we do. Um, the machine that we're standing in front of here is making triggers for AR-15s. Um, it runs probably about 10 different platforms of trigger. Um, and we make sure that it can, that they all fit in the fixtures in this machine. So that brings our volume and our capabilities up. Of course, you know, getting out all 10 triggers running on this machine. Um, we're somewhere around on a, on a slow month, 80,000 triggers in a month. And we have the capacity to hit a near 200,000 triggers in a month. In a month's time, a slow month is 80,000, which takes me back to the opening statement for everyone watching right now. It must have been a gift, a blessing, a, a real moment, a, a, an aha moment when you had eight machines and eight people times two shifts and the frustration that might have been there versus what you're able to accomplish now when you're thinking 80,000 to 200,000 pieces. I couldn't imagine. It, there, there's a lot. There's a lot in what you just said there. Uh, you know, there's all the tooling across, spread across eight machines and and 16 different people on two shifts. Um, the quality level that you get. I mean, I think our I think our rejections went from somewhere around three percent to less than a half percent. So the the benefits are enormous going on one machine. I almost have to take a breath thinking about what actually went into it previously to now, even the percentage of what you just said, then the tooling and the work holding and maybe the setup times and then the employees. And we all know the labor situation that's going on right now oh, yeah. and has been yes, for a sir. while. Just the domino effect of complication when you decided to implement this machine or this setup of machines, because you have one that was a little bit older over there, but not old by any means, but a little bit couple older. Months, couple months. Was it just really like a breath of fresh air, a sigh of relief? What was the change even in emotion when you got, when you made those changes? It, it, it truly made uh, hammers and triggers a lot easier for us to make. I mean, for sure. Um, we went from always being barely on time to being always early. 
Um, it, it truly may. The gains have been enormous. I mean, you can't, you can't, uh, you, you can't put words to it. Really, I mean, the, the gains have been enormous. Every way you think they would be, we've we've experienced gains. You know, Eric, we do these interviews because we try to put words to sometimes very obvious situations. But every engineer out there, every manufacturer out there, watches the beginning thirty seconds of this conversation and gets it immediately. They go, "Yeah, I know the cost of tooling. I know the cost of tool holding. I know the cost of work holding. I know." Time, time is of the utmost value. Scrap pieces and part, I mean, I know at this point, we're just putting words where words don't need to be fit. So I'm gonna change the subject a little bit and talk a little bit about Schmidt Tool and Engineering, 85 years. You obviously have the technology, it's a family owned company, you're creative to make your own parts. You're even looking into diving into other parts of the industry as well. Could you share a little bit about Schmidt Tool and Engineering so the audience could connect with you also? Sure, we're, uh, uh, 85 years in business almost, about 125 people. We do about $30 million a year in revenue. Um, we're, we're targeting growth right now. We're actually advertising in the power equipment. You know, we're, we're after still, we're after, we're after Echo, we're after these kinds of people right now because they have the kind of volume that we can help with and the problems that we could solve for them. Um, but that being said, we're not stopping there. We're also going to dip into, um, we're, we're chasing after our AS 9100 and we're gonna be going after uh, aerospace shortly. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, that's where we're going. There are so many companies out there that are looking for that reliable partner like you are. When you mentioned that statement about scrap going from a, a percentage to a smaller percentage, the fact that you mentioned that not that it was large before and then very, very small after, but the fact that you mentioned it instantly teaches me this is the type of company I want to work with because quality matters to them. You've invested in high quality machines. Quality matters to you. Getting things yep. done, you've already mentioned Eric. You said we were trying to fight to get parts out. Now we're always early. So time and delivery matters to you. To me, these are all the keys of a good partnership. Absolutely. Um, we, we, we chase after delivery and time and, and cost too. I mean, this, this type of machinery also brings the, the cost down. It's a, it's a significant expense to us to buy a machine like this, but it actually ends up bringing cost down for the customer. Since Eric brought that up, and originally I wasn't even going to talk about this, but I'm happy you did because there's so many people out there and sometimes it's just, it's a really big number upfront cost, right? It's a really big number. So maybe we need the jobs first that pay for the machine itself. But there's a lot of folks out there who I don't think are paying enough attention to the number at the end of what's being done. The amount of money that's being profited because of all the reduced costs and only get really scared at the upfront investment. But if we can look past that, your testimony is, is just that, a testimony to say, let's look past the upfront cost. What happens after that? Well, volumes sneak up on you. I mean, you, you got you got to constantly do the math um, every couple months and make sure the volumes haven't snuck up on you. If the volumes sneak up on you, you got to start looking at these kind of machines. This type of I, I'm most machine shops have looked at robotics. This is nothing but a really expensive robot. It's a really sophisticated, expensive robot. Um, and a lot of people, a lot of shops have looked at robots already to get that man cost out. When you're, when the volumes sneak up on you and a family's of parts, you should concentrate on families of parts. This is not, this is a family of parts machine. It's not making one part, it's making 10 parts. They're all significantly similar enough to run on one machine with almost no change over time. So you just gotta pay attention to that kind of thing. If you can ball up a bunch of work and put it into something, similar enough, you could, you could probably get close to buying and, and basically specking out a machine like this that could really, really help you. Whew. I mean, that's how you end a conversation, isn't it, Eric? You told me you were gonna fumble today. You've done an amazing job and you've definitely connected with the audience. The last thing I'm gonna ask you today before we turn these cameras off is where can we find out more? I know some people are interested right now in learning about your website and how they can connect with you. If you'd uh, like some help from Schmid Tool, please visit our website. It's www.schmidtool.com. That's where we're at. Eric, thank you so much for your time. I think we've now become best friends, at least from my side of things. I appreciate you educating me, sharing your time with the audience, and allowing them, hopefully, to learn more today that they can increase their productivity in their shops as well.
That's great. Yeah, Tony, I've been running into you all over the place now. It seems like I see you everywhere and we're definitely friends. Uh, you know, I, I seek you out. If you're there, I go, I go right up to you and say, hey, so you know, been having a lot of fun seeing you at these different events. You're you're in it to win it, and uh, what you're doing is important, and we really appreciate it out here. Thank you Machine so much. Shop, yeah. Machine Shop Appreciate World. you, Eric. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah.